The first thing we're going to want to do in Illustrator is start a new document. In order to get to the new document dialog, we can hit Command N or you can go up to File, New. Alright, you'll see a bunch of options, but don't get overwhelmed, it's fairly simple. First off, you have the name. It's good to name your document something meaningful because whenever you go to save an image or save the document itself, it'll default to this name. So you can save yourself some typing later if you've got a lot of images that you're going to render from this document or something like that. Alright, next we'll see Profile. Now you might expect that you can go into one of these profiles, change it around, and save your own profile for later use. That's unfortunately not how Adobe works. These files are actually Adobe Illustrator files located in a folder on your system. If you want to find out where they are and create your own, I suggest that you search for video and film, and then simply open up one of the well, go to the folder that video and film is in and modify the AI file by simply opening it up and then resaving it to the same folder. Okay, now we've got some artboard options here. It's a good idea to start with multiple artboards and we'll talk about that in the artboard section of this tutorial. But let's just start out with one just to keep it simple. If you did have more, you could arrange them here and also set the number of columns and these are the way that they're arranged but you can change that later on alright now depending on what profile you're in you'll get default sizes that are common to the specific medium I'm gonna show you one difference that video and film has from the others and that's this transparency grid down here but whenever we get to the document setup dialog you'll see that it's quite easy to change that no matter how you start off so all right moving on we've got width and height over here and orientation related to that it's important to know that orientation isn't really important all it really does is switch the the values over and the width and height okay now units a lot of these units you're going to be familiar with, but I want to just reiterate the difference between points, pickas, and pixels. Now, points and pixels are easy to get mixed up because at 72 pixels per inch, they're basically the same. And the reason for that is points are always 172nd of an inch. They are a unit of measurement. Now, pixels, they are a unit of data. They represent one specific color and you can have one of those per inch or you can have 300 it doesn't it doesn't matter it's just one unit of information okay now a picka is simply 12 points so let's select pickas and we'll see how they work here we've got 80 pickas and zero what does that mean that means points so as we go up to 11 We'll see that when we get to 12, it's much like getting to 10 in a decimal system. You just go up one. Okay, but if you don't need to use pickas, I, I wouldn't use them. They're kind of confusing, but a lot of people in the print industry need to use them. Another thing the print industry likes is bleed. Bleed is the extra space on the edge of a document that will basically get cut off in the printing process. If you're unsure if you need bleed, don't use it. Most people aren't going to need bleed. You'll know if you need bleed, so don't get confused about that. All right, advanced settings. If you're in a, or uh, sorry, a, a distance-based unit, then this is important. This is basically the pixels per inch. Uh, print is usually 300. Screen 72. All right, now what about color mode? A lot of us, we're going to be designing things for CKMY or CMYK printing process. But if you're going to be saving as a JPEG or a PNG file, always keep it in RGB. If you're unsure, keep it in RGB. RGB has a larger color space that it can save to and you'll lose a lot of data by saving in CMYK when you don't need it. So Stay in RGB unless you're absolutely sure that you're handing off a vector file to directly to a CMYK printer who needs it in CMYK or 
the client has specified that's what they want. All right, the last thing is preview mode. I want to recommend that you keep it in default because it's very easy to change this later on in the document. And this align objects the pixel grid, it's a good idea to keep it checked, but really uh, in the document you're going to have to make sure it's checked under the transform panel later on. So don't worry about that either. either. All right, that's about all you need to know to get your new document set up. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos to learn what we're going to do with it and how we're going to make it a smooth, buttery process to get from this new document dialogue to handing off your artwork to the world. Thanks for being awesome.